Okay, this is homework for Chapter 8 for Physics 101. It says the torque required to loosen a nut that is holding a flat tire in place on a car has a magnitude of 40 newton meters. So that's my torque is 40 newton meters. What minimum force must be exerted by the mechanic at the end of a 30 centimeter lug wrench to accomplish this task? So that's my moment arm, which is uh, 0 0.300 meters. And this should be 40.0 actually. So what I have here is I have this nut. Alright, and then I have a wrench going around it. The length of the lug wrench is 0 .300 meters, and then I'm assuming that my force is applied perpendicular to the lug wrench. That'll give me the maximum torque, making this angle 90 degrees. And so torque is equal to FR sine of theta, so 40 Newton meters equals F times R times the sine of 90, which of course is 1. And then I can solve for my force. It's going to be uh, 40 over 0.3 meters, which is 133 newtons. Calculate the net torque on the beam in this figure about an axis through O. So first, I'm going to go about an axis through here. Uh, now, the forces that apply torques are going to be this force. I'll call this torque 1. And then this force, I'll call this torque 2. Torque 1 is causing motion in this direction. That's uh, counterclockwise, so it's going to be positive. Torque 2 is causing torque in this direction. That's clockwise, so that's going to be negative. So first, for part A, my net torque, the sum of all my torques, is going to be torque 1 minus torque 2. Torque 1 is going to be 25 newtons. Remember, because torque is FR sine theta. 25 newtons times this distance. That's the distance from where the force is applied to the axis of rotation times the angle of the sine, the sine of the angle. But in this case, I need to know the, the angle between the force and the moment arm, which is going to be 60 degrees, uh, minus torque 2, which is going to be 10 newtons, times 4 meters, times the sine of 20 degrees. Let's see, that's 50 sine of 60. Uh, 43 minus 40 sine of 20 minus 14 which gives me 29 newton meters you might get 30 newton meters depending how you carry sig figs all right, 29 newton meters. It comes out positive, so my net torque is in the counterclockwise direction. Now for part B, I ha now have a new axis of rotation. Uh, it's through point C right there. So now my axis of rotation is around point C. So now I'm going to call this torque 1, and I'll call this one torque 2. Torque 1 causes motion in that direction. That's counterclockwise, so it's positive. Torque 2 causes motion in that direction. That's clockwise, so it's negative. So negative torque 1, negative, or positive torque 1, negative torque 2. So the sum of my torques is going to be torque 1 minus torque 2. Similar thing here, I have equal to uh, 30 newtons times 2 meters, that's the distance from here to here, times the sine of the angle, which is 45 degrees, minus torque 2, which is going to be 10 newtons. Now, 
the distance from the point where it's applied to the axis of rotation, that distance is 2 meters. Times the sine of the angle, which is the sine of 20. So that's 60 sine of 45. 42 minus 20 sine of 20, which is 6.8, 35. That's in Newton meters, and since it's positive, it's counterclockwise. Notice that in both of these, that there were forces that were not used. For part A, which is in the blue when it was going about this axis, we didn't include this force because for that force, R would equal zero. R is the distance from where the force is applied to the axis of rotation. And since the axis of rotation is at where the force is applied, uh, that force doesn't apply a torque. Similarly, here, we didn't include this force because there was no torque provided by that force. Okay, a cook holds a 2 kilogram carton of milk at arm's length, as in this figure. What force FB must be exerted by the biceps of the muscle? And uh, it's set up like this. Your bicep is actually applied just a little bit from the axis of rotation. So we're taking this as of our axis of rotation. And then the force provided by the bicep is there. Uh, this angle is 30 degrees, so this angle is 60 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a bar here. This is my moment arm. And then I have a force, the force weight of the milk. So if I want to take it out of the, uh, the muscle, I'm going to draw it down here again. This is my axis of rotation. I have a force due to the bicep there and a force due to the milk there. I know that this distance is 0 0.08 meters. And then this distance from here to here that is from where the force is applied to the axis of rotation is uh, 20.25 meters plus 0 0.08 meters, which is what? 0.33 meters. All right, now I know that the sum of my torques has to equal zero. Uh, this force over here causes a counterclockwise torque, so it's positive. I'll call this positive torque one. And this one is going to be negative torque 2 because it causes a clockwise torque. So torque 1 minus torque 2 equals 0. That's going to be FW. FW, let's see, the uh, 2 kilogram carton of milk. So FW equals M times G, which is 2 times 9.8, 2 kilograms. So that's going to be 20 newtons is equal to 20 newtons uh, times 0.33 minus the force due to your bicep that's the force that your bicep has to exert times 0.08 meters equals to zero so FB then is going to be 20 newtons times the moment arm over 0.08 meters I get 83 newtons. It's a pretty big force that you have to apply from your bicep because you lose a lot of advantage that your bicep is connected to this lever arm at a distance that's so close to the axis of rotation. So a big force just to provide a small force out at your, out at your hand. Four objects are held in position at the corners of a rectangle shown in this figure. Find the moment of inertia about the x, the y, and the axis through O and perpendicular to the page. There was a mistake here. You can probably see this should be 4 meters, and this should be 6 meters, right, as it's drawn. Uh, for part A, I'm looking through this axis right here. This is the x-axis. Uh, and then I just want to find the moment of inertia. It's going to be the sum of mr squared 
in this case, this R, it's going to be uh, 3 meters. Likewise, this R is 3 meters. So it's going to be adding up this force, this mass, this mass, times R squared. So it's going to be 3 kilogram times R squared, which is 3 meters squared. plus 2 kilograms times 3 meters squared plus this mass, 2 kilograms times 3 meters, actually this should be 3.00 plus 4 kilograms, that's this mass, times 3 meters squared. So if I do all those, let's see, I get 3 times 9, that's 27, plus 2 times 9 is 18, plus 2 times 9 is 18, plus 4 times 9 is 36, 72, 79, 99 kilogram meters squared. Is that right? 36, 36, 72, 79, 99 kilogram meters squared. So that's about the x-axis. Now let's do it about the y-axis. So now I'm going about this axis right here. And now my, my R, my moment arm, is going to be smaller. Instead of being 3 meters, it's going to be 2 meters. And that's going to be the same for all of the masses. This is for part B. So I is the sum of MR squared. And since R is the same for all the masses, I'm just going to say uh, it's going to be 3 kilograms plus 2 kilograms, plus 4 kilograms, plus 2 kilograms. That's all my masses times R squared, which is 2 meters squared. All right, I just factored out that R squared. So I have 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 2 is 11 times 4. So it's 44 kilogram meters squared. All right, so that's about the y-axis. And now I want to know about the axis O. Oh, let's see, O isn't drawn here, but it's going to be through there. So it's going to be about this axis. And then the whole thing is going to rotate around. So this whole thing is going to rotate about through that axis. Now I need to know what is this distance. All right. I know that this distance is 3 meters. I know that this distance is 2 meters. So I can find this distance is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. See, that's the square root of 13. So I get 3.6 meters. All right, so now my moment, my axis of rotation for each of these is going to be 3.6 meters. And so in a similar way as I did in part B, I can find the moment of inertia. It's going to be 3 kilograms plus 2 kilograms plus 4 kilograms plus 2 kilograms times r squared, which is 2 meters, or excuse me, not 2 meters, 3.6 meters squared. It's 5, 11 times 3.6. That's 13. get 143. Actually, let's see. I didn't really do my sig figs correctly there. Let me go back and redo this, keeping proper sig figs, because I should have three sig figs here for all of them. So it's 11.00 uh, because each of these, I didn't write it, but it had two zeros, times 3.6 squared, which is 130, and then 11, or excuse me, not 130, uh, 13.0, and then 11 times 13, get 143 kilograms meter squared. All right. Now, the only reason I did this 
where I added up all the masses is because every mass had the same moment of an had the same moment arm. So if the different masses had different moment arms, then you'd have to write it out like I did up here in Part A. All right, a 10 kilogram cylinder rolls without slipping on a rough surface uh, at an instant when its center of gravity has a speed of 10 meters per second. I want to determine its translational kinetic energy. So for part A, I want to know its kinetic energy. Translational, that just means in a straight line, it's equal to 1 half mv squared. Uh, the mass is 10 kilograms. So this is just going to be 1 half of 10 times 10 meters per second. That's 5 times 100, 500 joules. For part B, I also want to know the rotational kinetic energy. It's going to be 1 half I omega squared. All right, so now I need to do some things where I find, uh, I need to find the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia for a cylinder rotating about this axis is 1 half mR squared. Uh, give the radius up here. I don't give the radius, but the radius will cancel out. So I'm going to plug this in. Uh, I'm going to have 1 half times I, which is 1 half mR squared. And then omega, if you recall, V was equal to omega times R. So I can say that omega is equal to V over R. All right, so this is going to be V over R squared. And then notice that my radii are going to cancel out. And so the rotational kinetic energy is going to be 1 half times 1 half times m times v squared. So that's a quarter mv squared. And that works out to be 250 joules. That's the rotational kinetic energy. And then if I want to know the total, I just add the translational and the rotational. 750 joules. Horizontal 800 newton merry-go-round of radius 1.5 meters start from rest by a constant horizontal force of 50 newtons. Find the kinetic energy of the merry-go-round after three seconds. All right, so I have um, a force of 50 newtons applied at 1.5 meters from the center. Uh, this weight of this object is 800 newtons. So I can find the mass is just going to be 800 over 9.8. So Newton's second law. That is uh, 82 kilograms. Or I'll just uh, say 80 kilograms. And I want to know its kinetic energy after a time of three seconds. Uh, what else do I know here? That looks like about it. So, in order to find its kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half I omega squared. I times omega squared. So first, let's just find I. That's fairly easy. This is a disk. I'll look on my, on my sheet for a disk or a cylinder. It's the same. It's going to be 1 half mR squared. That's one half of 80 times the radius squared. It's 40 times 1.5 squared. I get 90 kilogram meters squared. All right, so that's my moment of inertia. Now I need to find the angular velocity, and that's a little bit more difficult. I know that uh, after a certain amount of time that omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. All right, I know that it starts at rest, so omega naught equals zero. I know the time, but I don't know alpha. However, I do know that torque 
equals I times alpha. So I can find the torque. That's just the force times the moment arm is equal to I times alpha. And then I solve for alpha. That's FR over I. My force is 50 newtons applied at 1.5 meters divided by 90 kilogram meters squared. That's the moment of inertia for a disc or a cylinder. So that's 75 over 90. It's 0.83. That's radians per second squared. Now I take this and I plug it in up here. So omega equals 0.83 times 3 seconds. I get 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds. Uh, now I can come back and do my original which is the kinetic energy. I have everything I need to know. That's one half times I, which is 90. We had up here. Times, uh, I'm sorry, the units here, they should be radians per second. Times 2.5 radians per second squared. I get 280 joules of kinetic energy. This system of small objects is rotating at an angular speed of rep two revolutions per second. The objects are connected by light flexible spokes, be lengthened or shortened. What is the new angular speed if the if the spokes are shortened? to 0.5 meters. So omega is with uh, r equal to 1 meter. That's the distance from here to here. And now I want to know what is omega, I'll call this omega initial and r initial, what is omega equal to if r is shortened to 0.5 meters? All right, so this is like sitting on a rotating stool and pulling your arms in. All right, so we want to find out how does the moment of inertia change because we know that the initial angular momentum equals the final angular momentum and L is equal to the mass times the velocity. That is the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So omega final equals I naught omega naught over I final over I final excuse me just I final all right so I need to find I naught and I F I naught is sum of MR squared each of these has a mass of uh, well it's not given it's just M so m times r squared, which is 1 meter. All right. And this is multiplied times 4. So i naught is equal to 4m. i final, that is when this distance now becomes 0.5 meters. They're all pulled in. to a much smaller radii and so the moment of inertia is going to be m times 0.5 meters squared and there are four of the particles all at the same distance so it's going to be uh, half squared is a quarter so it's just going to be equal to 1m all right so I can put that in over here I naught was equal to 4m times omega naught which was two revolutions per second over 1m. These cancel. The m's cancel rather. And so I'm left with 8 revolutions per second. So when you bring in those masses uh, by a factor of 2, it increases the rotation rate by a factor of 4. By a factor of 4. And this is similar, we see this a lot in uh, 
astronomical things uh, in galaxy formation and then also in star formation that the mass the masses as they begin to coalesce towards the center uh, the you should see a very large increase in the angular rotation of the object uh, but in fact you don't really see that high of a rotation but that, that's a totally different problem that's the end